Well, I was born at my grandfather's and grandmother's house, not in a hospital. We had an old country doctor, and it happened to be the same doctor that had delivered my mother. We lived on a farm for about two years. I started the school at a little country school. I was the only first grader in the school. I was five years old. It was about a mile down the country road, and I walked down the road with my little lunch pail in my hand to go to this little country school. Then at the end of the first semester, we moved to Independence, Kansas, which was a much larger town. And I was enrolled in grade school there. And I didn't want to go to kindergarten, which is what they wanted to put me in because I was only five. And I guess I must have thrown pretty much of a temper tantrum because they did allow me to go ahead and go to first grade on probation. And I did pass just fine, so after that, my schooling went on normally. I went to junior high school in Independence, and through my junior year there, and at that time we moved to Fredonia, Kansas, which is where we met. My husband had a little brother who was in high school with me, and he knew his brother was coming home from the Navy soon, and he said, you would be perfect for my brother. I want to introduce you to him as soon as he gets home. And he told me that he had this girl that he wanted me to meet. So I guess he was Cupid and we, uh, we dated some. Well, I was impressed because he had been in the Navy and I never had dated a serviceman before. And he was polite and he was clean and he didn't drink and he didn't smoke and all those were advantages. His uh, parents were Christians and he was a Christian. They went to the same church that my family did. And his little sister was a friend of my little sister, so we had a lot of things in common before we ever started going out together. I also had a younger sister that was about her same age. And they being six years younger than we were, which meant they were about 12, 13, such a matter. And they took a great deal of interest in our dates. I was working in this cabinet shop part-time, making furniture and what have you, and one of the woods I worked with is walnut. And walnut wood, when you're working with it, stains your hands pretty bad, and it would cause my hands to be dark. And I didn't want to go on a date with this girl I was trying to impress with dark hands, and I couldn't get that walnut off anyway, but finally tried, decided to use bleach. Well, you know how bleach smells. and. <clears throat> So when I got through getting the walnut off of my hand smell with bleach and those girls, they figured out, well, they were going to check and see then if she smelled like bleach when she came in off the date. <laughs> and then they figured out that they were going to start putting a strong perfume on her and see if I smelled like perfume when I came in off the date. I found out after a date or two that almost any time I called her, I could get a date but I also knew that she was supposedly dating some other man there in Fredonia. Uh, and she knew that he, his name was Frank, that Frank was working at a cabinet shop and that I also was spending some time down there at that cabinet shop just as a, to do some things that I wanted to do that the cabinet maker would let me do. And we didn't know who each other was, but she knew we were working side by side. And then I have found out since then, and it's a good thing I didn't find it out too early or it might have separated us, but I found out since then that one time when I took her on a date to the show, she was sitting between Frank and me and she was holding my hand with her right hand and she was holding his hand with her left hand. She was not going to take any chances on losing one. I didn't tell him about that until about a year ago. Well, they would invite me over to dinner pretty often, which I appreciated. That probably had as much to do with us getting married as anything, because her mother was a good <laughs> My cook. My mother's fried chicken. Yeah. And the first time we had fried chicken over there, I took the chicken leg, and her dad was trying to be a nice host, and he said, oh, put that back and get, the, get a good piece. And I said, well, this is a good piece. I like the dark meat. Well, it's not true, but I've said several times that he said, well, if you like the dark meat of the chicken, then you can marry my daughter. Because they all like the white meat. And to this day, when we go order chicken, if it comes with white and dark on each plate, I get her dark meat and she gets my white meat. That's one of the things that helps us get. 
I can't recall ever proposing to her. It, it just our deciding to get married was just like the sunrise, I guess. It just happened. <laughs> we just we uh, kept dating and liking each other, and uh, we finally realized we weren't dating anybody but each other, and we finally said, well, if this is the way it's going to be. I guess we better get married. So we, we decided to get married. My parents approved of Dale wholeheartedly. However, they did think we were a little bit young and would like for us to have waited a little longer. But when they decided we didn't want to wait a little longer, why they very cooperative. I don't know that he ever really did propose to me. I think we just sort of came to an agreement that we were going to get married. He gave me a diamond ring, we'll say that. It wasn't a great big one. He couldn't afford a great big one. Well, our honeymoon consisted of one night in the Mayo Hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We were married at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning in the First Baptist Church of Fredonia, Kansas, and we did not have a car, so we rode through to Tulsa with my cousin and her husband and my brother who were on their way from southeast Kansas back to the Texas Panhandle and uh, they dropped us off at the Mayo Hotel on Sunday evening, August the 31st, 1947. And we spent the night. And he still has the receipt for the hotel bill, and believe it or not, it was $6 a night. And then the next day we went by bus to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and stayed for two weeks in a friend's apartment while we were getting a trailer house settled that we were gonna live in. There was one really kind of funny thing though we went back to my family not my family reunion my high school reunion a couple of years ago and we went into the newspaper office to speak to my friend who owned the little newspaper there and my old boyfriend was her brother-in-law well I didn't realize it but he was back in the back of the building working on a car and he came up and was standing there by us and I didn't look at this guy because I had no idea who it was and he finally had to tell me who he was, and it was my old boyfriend. And Dale got a big charge out of the fact that I didn't recognize him. So he, he was working on a car at that time. So when we got outside, Dale said, now see, if you'd have married him, you'd have been married to a mechanic. And I said, no, if I'd have married him, he would have been the president of his company. We have two boys and two girls. Uh, Deborah is the oldest. And then two years later we had David, and five years later we had Deanne, and two years later after that we had Danny. During that time we lived in Eastland and Odessa and in Midland. I think love involves a lot of things. Of course there's the physical part and that's the part that most young people think is the greatest. But after you've been married a while you learn that that is really just a small part of marriage. That concern for each other and helping each other and trying to be a good helpmate is more important.